This is about to get crazy, y'all. All right, so coming out swinging for rumors proper, we've got... Hello, internets. All right, um, we have a giant show for you today, nerds. I don't have a giant amount of time, so we're not gonna really d waste any time doing all the things. Don't forget, before we jump into things, to click that subscribe button on whichever platform you're listening or watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, I, I do get a fair amount of views that are from non-subscribers, and the more you subscribe, the more it helps out. And it's free, just a real quick thing. I don't really do a whole lot of ads. I'm gonna start doing ads for stuff that I'm selling, not necessarily stuff that, you know, other people are trying to get me to sell for them, but that is neither here nor there. Thank you very much, nerds. Let's jump into the news. All right, so in news for today, we have no music news. There's nothing that's really worth talking about at the moment. The music kind of comes and goes. It is what it is. So TV streaming news is where we're beginning. And in TV streaming, we have a large follow-up section. We also have a large news section. So follow-ups for TV streaming. We have a new teaser trailer for Are You Afraid of the Dark? This is the second season of the reboot series over on Nickelodeon. First season was only three episodes. Second season, I think, is going to be five, but don't hold me to that because I didn't put that in the notes. But check out the teaser. It's going to be cool. We're moving on. Next, we're talking about Walking Dead. This one's very, very brief. We we do have the official announcement that production is underway on season 11, so that's pretty awesome. Moving next into The Last of Us, we have The Last of Us series has made two casting announcements over the last couple of days. First being Pedro Pascal has been cast as Joel, as well as, uh, what's her name, Ellie has been announced as Bella Ramsey. If you don't know that name, you should. She was Leanna Marmot from Game of Thrones, the, the little bear Yes, she is going to be Ellie, so that's pretty freaking awesome. So that is our follow-up section. Let's come out swinging and uh, come out of the gate swinging with the news. We're going right into Mandalorian news. This one, if you have been living under a rock, you haven't heard, but there is more to the story than just what you have heard about Mandalorian and Gina Carano and Cara Dune and the firing of Gina Carano. So. Uh, again, this is huge. Everyone is talking about this. So I, my spin on this, we, we know that Gina Carano has been fired. Um, there is rumors around this, so definitely stick around to the end of the show because there is going to be some a whole lot of speculation and a, apparently a few sources are saying different things. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so if you don't know why Gina Carano has been fired because all you've heard is she made anti-Semitic remarks, then you have been informed incorrectly. She made a very flimsy comparison between being conservative... And being made other, much like uh, the the victims of WW2 were in, in around that time. So without using too harsh of vocabulary, so that we don't get flagged on certain uh, outlets, um, it was it was a poor comparison, but it was no less incendiary than anything Pedro Pascal has said over the last two and a half years, approximately. No less incendiary than anything a lot of Disney employees, people who were who made incendiary comments and then were moments later hired by Disney. It was, it was by any objective standard, less uh, offensive or incendiary than anything that these people have made, but because Gino Carano does not sit well with some of the higher ups, uh, it seems namely Kathleen Kennedy, then this was their excuse to get rid of her. Um, I, I know I'm being biased with this because I am, you know, relatively conservative, but it just seems like I wouldn't have said the thing that she said. I don't necessarily believe the thing that she said. There is a seed of truth to the fact that 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 is the beginning of how you create uh, a, a movement of making people less than human. Um, I don't think that is the direction it's going necessarily, but again, we're not getting into that. It's politics and whatever. So 
Uh, Gina Carano was was fired for making World War II references in correlation to current happenings when just months ago, Pedro Pascal straight up called people Nazis and compared the things they're doing to concentration camps, and he's perfectly fine. So again, uh, I, I think it's I think it's a little one-sided. We're gonna move right along. There has been a, a kind of update to this in the last few hours, in that Gina Carano has signed a new movie deal uh, with The Daily Wire, which is a conservative news outlet. Um, very interesting. They ha- they did just put out their first movie, uh, Run, Fight, uh, Run, Hide, Fight, uh, not that long ago. It was actually pretty good. If you like good action movies, it's not the greatest. It's I wouldn't say it's going to change cinema, but it's it's definitely stands up to anything that's come out in the last five to ten years. So if you have the opportunity, go check that out, and we will be keeping tabs on whatever this Gina Carano project becomes with The Daily Wire. As we move on, we're going to be moving on now. We're talking... Now about a new series called The Man Who Fell to Earth. It's coming to Paramount Plus. Remember, Paramount Plus is taking the place of CBS All Access. Reasons. Um, The Man Who Fell to Earth is based on a novel that came out in 1963. It's also going to be based on the David Bowie movie that came out in 1976 that was also based on the novel. This one's going to be a little bit of a different interpretation of that novel. And it's going to be starring Chuedil. I really apologize. I can never pronounce his name proper. His first name, anyway. Uh, Chuedil Ejiofor. uh, The bad guy. The one of the main villains from the Firefly movie, or the Serenity movie, Firefly series, I guess, Serenity movie, uh, and it's going to be sh- the showrunner for this project is going to be Alex Kurtzman. Very interestingly, uh, Paramount Plus very actively pursued this once Hulu announced that they were no longer going to be pursuing this. So this has been in the works for a little bit. Very excited to see what happens because I really love Ezio Four. I think he is a fantastic actor. The man is brilliant. All right, moving right along, we are talking about Overlook Hotel is a new, also HBO Max series that is coming out. Uh, J.J. Abrams, Bad Robot is going to be producing. Uh, It sounded like Abrams was going to be showrunning. Obviously, this is going to be based on the Shining books uh, from Stephen King. It's going to be a prequel, though, to the Shining movie and the actual Shining book how it's going to interplay with any of the the words that that Stephen King wrote. We don't know yet, but we will be keeping tabs. We're moving right along. Like I said, gotta go fast. Uh, Clue is the next piece. We have, not only do we have the movie that is in the works, the reboot movie, but now there's an announcement that there's going to be an animated series. Uh, Deadline is reporting it's an animated series. That's all we really know. That's all I can tell you. We're moving on. (laughs) Next, we're talking very slightly more meta about HBO Max. Uh, HBO Max has made a couple of new announcements for new animated series that they are calling adult, quote-unquote, adult-oriented animated series, one of which is dealing with Velma from Scooby-Doo. Very interesting there. Uh, Showrunner, for or a producer, rather, executive producer on this is going to be Mindy Kaling. Mindy Kaling is also going to be the voice of Velma. I don't know how I feel about that. Mindy Kaling is pretty good at a lot of things. I loved her in The Office. I've loved her in quite a few movies where she kind of plays a side character to the main things going on. As a main actor, I feel like she can get on the nerves a little bit. Um, We'll see. I love the character of Velma. Velma was always one of my favorites when I watched Scooby-Doo as a kid. So, uh, yeah, here we go. And the other half of this, sorry, the other half of this one is uh, Clone High. Clone High is getting rebooted on HBO Max. And this also is under this, quote unquote, adult-oriented animation series banner that they've announced. We don't know a whole lot about the Clone High piece just yet. We will be keeping tabs on it. And if they announce anything else, because they made it sound like there's going to be a number of these announcements over the next little while. Uh, And then our final piece in TV streaming has to do with the Red Wall series. Brian Jacques' uh, anthropomorphic animal uh, fantasy series that is like 20 plus books long is going to Netflix. Now, this is not the first time that this series has been adapted into an animated series. It is going to be an animated series over at Netflix. I don't know if I said that just a moment ago. Um, But 
The reason this is significant is because this is the first time that the entire 20 plus book catalog has been given to one creation studio, uh, the, the rights of which anyway, have been given to one studio. So the way this is going to start is this is going to break the mold for Netflix. So this is going to be the first actual announced instance of them starting with a movie and then spinning that movie into a series. So exactly how that's going to work, we will keep tabs on and all of that jazz that though is the end of the tv streaming section So now let's talk about the movies. Uh, in movies, we have one follow-up and it has to do with another casting announcement for the Borderlands movie. We now have Jack Black being announced to be playing Claptrap. So there you go. Uh, moving ra- right on down the road, this next piece I probably could have or should have maybe put in rumors, but we're going to put it in here, but... It has to do with Spider-Man 3, and it is Tom Holland talking to Esquire magazine saying, no, uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are not actually going to be in this movie unless they're keeping a giant secret from me. And then five seconds later in the same interview, he says, I actually have no idea what this movie's about, and we've been shooting it for how many months at this point. So really, him saying Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield aren't going to be is kind of one of these. Ah. Uh, just a big ah uh, wink, right? Hey, I don't, I don't know. You see, you see, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I, we don't believe you, Tom. Uh, there is plenty of reason to believe elsewise. <laughs> so this kind of brings up a larger point of now movie studios are having their actors outright lie, which this started with Disney. I mean, I guess this is still technically Disney, but it's Sony at the same time. This started with Disney giving us incorrect information in trailers, uh, had, again, outright having their actors lie in interviews, doing the, the pre, uh, pre-release press runs. Very strange situation. Don't know how I feel about it, but we're moving on. Uh, Next, we have a real quick announcement also from Disney that Blue Sky Studios, which was once owned by Fox uh, uh, Searchlight, I believe, was was owned by Fox. (laughs) Uh, It is their animation studio that gave us the Ice Age series, amongst other things, is going to be shuttered come April, which kind of sucks. But, I mean, they are the competition with Pixar, right? So why would they want to keep them open if Pixar is struggling because, you know, the, the sickness that is everywhere, uh, then they, they have two animation houses. We're going to get rid of one. Kind of makes sense from a business standpoint, from an a, a, a entertainment consumption standpoint. It does not uh, sit very well. Uh, continuing right along with our last piece of movie news, we have Jackass 4 is, all, is nearing the end of their production. Uh, and... In so doing, they have fired Bam Margera, which is a very strange thing considering it's jackass and it's like Bam and Knoxville are the ones that do the jackass. I mean, they're the ones in charge. There's also like all of the rest of the cast, uh, Steve-O and so on and so forth. But, and Ryan Dunn, sadly, not going to be part of this one. May he rest in peace. But, uh, so, because Bam has been fired, and because Bam is Bam, he is now calling for a boycott of the movie. No word as to whether or not they're going to keep all of his footage in the movie. I would definitely imagine they have shot plenty of scenes that they can shoot around that will... They don't need Bam as part of the movie, so uh, we will be keeping tabs, though, as this develops. That is the end of the movies, though. <clears throat> All right, uh, gaming and tech, baby. We have a couple of follow-ups. First is that SpaceX Starlink program. Uh, we They are now opening up pre-orders. If you are in the service area, then it is a uh, uh, $100 pre-order service fee. That they come set you up, and then once the service goes live, you will be able to beta test this service, which is kind of awesome. Uh, our other follow-up has to do very cr- very briefly with Fortnite. Fortnite just released some new Tron skins, which I found pretty freaking awesome, so go check that out. Uh, and then our news. We have a really big piece, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time here. Really big piece on CD Projekt Red. CD Projekt Red just the other day Uh, had some ransomware attack. Uh, uh, Some hackers claimed that they had the code for not only Cyberpunk 2077 and not only The Witcher, but also an unreleased version of The Witcher, as well as a bunch of HR files, a bunch of stuff was taken 
digitally from CD Projekt Red. Uh, it sucks, but CD Projekt Red did say that none of the information taken is any of their clients, per, or any of their users' personal information. So, like your bank account, if you have an, uh, uh, if you've paid them for something, that did not get taken. It's all internal files. They also said that all of their backups are still intact, so they are working on uh, recovering their files from the backups. So that is good news. And they're also working with the authorities to find the hackers in question. Now, there was a, a, a new portion of this, an update to this last night. Uh, it does sound like the uh, the code that was stolen has been sold on the dark web. The dark web. On the dark web. The dark web. Uh, for approximately $7 million dollars. Also, as part of that sale, it does sound like the, the code will not be sold further. So whoever bought it has said that they are not going to be uh, auctioning it off at a higher price down the road. So kind of good news, I guess. But that is what we have there. Next, we're talking very briefly about Borderlands 3. We have the announcement of the Director's Cut DLC. Director's Cut DLC is going to be out March 18th. I guess the this is the official announcement because it kind of leaked about a month ago. So official announcement and release date. March 18th is the release date. We, uh, If you don't know what's in it, you have uh, a lot of stuff, actually. There's a bunch of new rewards, some behind-the-scenes content, murder mysteries. I don't know what that means because I'm not a huge Borderlands player. Uh, huge new raid boss called Hemovorus, uh, Hemovorus probably, and uh, some vault card challenges that are going to be new once the, once this launches. So uh, the, the result of the vault card challenges is going to be a bunch of new gear. It sounds pretty awesome. If you're a Borderlands player, go check it out. Next, we're talking about Kingdom Hearts. This is also a very brief piece. Kingdom Hearts has been announced that it's going to be released on PC, finally. The entire series, mostly. Uh, the entire series minus... Uh, Kingdom Hearts 358-2 and uh, the 358-2 days, sorry, and then Recoded will not be officially released as playable games, though there are some cinematics that are in the other uh, Kingdom Hearts games that you will be able to watch that covers the story in those two games. So, pretty freaking awesome. Going to be available on Steam uh, March 30th. I think there's going to be a physical release too, but don't hold me to that because it could be wrong. That, though, is the gaming and tech section, guys. Let's talk ever so briefly about comic books. We only have one piece of, up to, uh, of comic book news, and it's a uh, new Legends of the Dark Knight anthology series. Uh, this is going to be a digital first series. Uh, each digital issue is going to be 10 pages. Each physical issue is going to be 20 pages. So two digital issues make up one physical issue. Get it? See how that works? Uh, the, the digital issues are going to be... Starting April 2nd, uh, the physical issues will be May 18th, uh, and it's going to be a different, it's an anthology, so each chapter is going to be a different story. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if you are, but that is all we have for comic books. Oh, rumor mill. This is about to get crazy, y'all. All right, so let's get first into uh, refutations. This one... This refutation is technically a rumor in and of itself, so here we go. Craven, the rumor that we reported on last episode, uh, the Keanu Reeves Craven, we actually have two updates to it, and the second of which is the refutation. So the first one is uh, from a much more reliable source saying not only does Sony want Keanu Reeves to play Craven, but they officially offered it to him. And then an equally big source came out and said, yes, they did offer it to him, and then Keanu Reeves has turned it down. So, kind of a refutation. This is all rumor, rumor, rumor. Uh, I'm going to leave it as a refutation, so we're not going to give it a percentage because this is rumor based on rumor based on rumor. So, yeah, we're moving right along. Our next one, again, coming out swinging for rumors proper, we've got Mandalorian Cara Dune. So... Like, the night I uploaded the last episode is when everything hit the fan, and it went nuts. The internet went crazy, you guys. Um, 
So we covered in the TV section about how she was fired, how uh, Gina Carano has been fired. Well, there seems to be new rumors with some corroborating evidence. I I haven't seen the evidence myself. This is very much rumor, rumor, rumor. Uh, There seems to be new rumors saying that Disney may have jumped the gun uh, or whoever was in charge of making this decision pissed off their upper ups. It's kind of a mixed. uh, This is very much in development. Um, So... It now sounds like the backlash, the internet backlash that has been exploding over the last two, three days is scaring Disney. And they are questioning whether or not firing Gina Carano was a good thing for the image. Uh, As I I made my, my feelings about this pretty clear in the TV streaming section, so... Go back to that if you want to. If you wonder how I feel about this, sec, I think this actually would be awesome. I really don't know because the source has had some really spot on stuff before, and they're also claiming that they have multiple inside sources with Lucasfilm that are corroborating this. But the source also very much makes it clear that. This is still very much rumor until we can get some other corroborating information. So, likelihood that this is a thing, who this is a real tough call. I'm putting I'm putting it just below half. We're going at about 40% for this because that's a tough pill to swallow. I don't know if Disney's really that scared. I mean, honestly, it's probably a few hundred thousand fans, but it's only a few hundred thousand fans. So we'll see. Uh, Next, we're talking about Apple. This one's a lot of fun. This is a tech rumor, which we don't get a lot of those. Uh, Tech rumor about Apple. Apple is rumored to be hard at work at some micro OLED screens, OLED screens, uh, because they're working on their glass. They're Apple glasses, much like Google Glass. This is Apple glasses. Um, they're AR glasses, again, much like the Google ones. I, I don't see why not. Google already has this product, so it totally makes sense that Apple would do this. I'm putting this at 70, 75% likelihood that this is a thing. I don't see why they wouldn't, but I did just one source. We'll see. We're moving on. Uh, next, we're talking about Star Wars. This one's technically a Mandalorian thing, too, but it could have larger repercussions throughout the rest of the uh, Disney Star Wars universe. That is that apparently there's a new rumor that's saying that Darth Talon is going to be joining the Mandalorian at some point with all of these Sith Lords that are supposed to be coming to the Mandalorian. I don't know if the rule of two still holds. (laughs) This is a very interesting situation. I want this to be awesome. I want this to happen. Uh, It's a very weak source and all of the other stuff that's going on behind the scenes that we know about behind the scenes and then the strong rumors behind the scenes. This seems like the last thing. It might be on the plate somewhere, but it's the last thing they're thinking about. So So likelihood that we will see Darth Talon in the near future, probably about 25 to 30 percent likelihood in the distant future. I yeah, sure. She's a she's a a lady Sith like that would be the first time we would see a lady Sith on screen. Do it. Let's go Uh, beyond. So, yeah, long term, we're looking at probably like an 80 percent chance because that just totally makes sense. Uh, Next, we're talking about video game rumors. That is Silent Hill. We got another rumor about another game. So this is now there are two games rumored to be working uh, rumored to be in the works uh, over at Konami. One of them the rumor says is being made in house by Sony somehow, but then this other game is being made so it'll be a multi-platform release. There's just way too much weird about this. There's not enough corroborating evidence. We're going to put this right about Uh, I'm not even going to go 30. I'm 25%, and that's being generous. 25% uh, validity to this rumor. I don't don't think it's going to happen, but I would love for it. I think that's pretty freaking awesome to think about. Uh, Next, we're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This one, I think, is a joke, but we had to put it in here because it's kind of hilarious. Uh, Jason Momoa has reportedly been offered the voice role of Knuckles for the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie. Um, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. I think that would be so freaking cool, but I don't think that's a thing. Uh, we're putting that at about 15% likelihood because that's just too silly to be real. Uh, next, 
This one kind of makes sense, but it hasn't been made a uh, official announcement made around it. Just a bunch of people going, this is what's going to happen. So Warner Brothers reportedly wants to make Mortal Kombat into a movie universe. Ah, uh, yes, please, and thank you. I'm Aside from the fact that I'm a huge Mortal Kombat nerd, uh, I think this does make a lot of sense because Warner Brothers is looking for something to rival... I mean, everyone wants a cinematic universe, right? So this makes a lot of sense. I'm putting this one at about 70% likelihood uh, because it is one source, a relatively weak source, but it does make a lot of sense. I think the, the, the viability here is pretty solid. Uh, our last rumor has to do with Batman the Animated Series. We now have our first rumor around this announced reboot, or uh, continuation, I guess, saying that Kevin Conroy is, in fact, going to come back as the voice of the Bat. I think that would be awesome. The rumor does elaborate saying that nothing is known about Mark Hamill's potential return as the Joker, but I, if they get Conroy, I would imagine they will also have the pull to get uh, Hamill. So, likelihood for this one... Again, super weak rumor. It would be awesome because Kevin Conroy is the voice of Batman. Uh, still, the source is not solid. I cannot give this too much validity until there's more sources saying the same thing. We're putting this at, third. I'm going to bump it up five more percent, 35 percent likely that we actually get Kevin Conroy in the return to Batman the Anime series. And that's the rumors, guys. That is also the end of the episode. What did I miss? What should we talk about in the next one? Let me know in the comments down below. If though you want to go deeper in the conversation, jump over to the website, generalinerdy.net. That is the place that you can go see all of the written things. There's also a Patreon, patreon.com. You can go see all of the other things that I do up there. Uh, thank you very much, nerds. They, you, over to this side of my face, you should be seeing some buttons right about now. You can go see other stuff happening on the channel. Click it, tap it, do whatever you got to do. Support. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that before you head out. Click the thumbs up. All of the things. You know what to do. I love your faces. We'll see you in the next one. Before we go, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.